بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين. We're going to start looking at uh, Imam Ghazali's definitions of reasons, and today we'll start with his first um, def not definition of um, we're looking at his types of different types of reason, and today we we'll look at the first type and his definition of that type so the first type is for love reason is a characteristic um quality um and he doesn't say it but we can you know, consider it as a power or faculty, the same thing. So it's a faculty or a power or a characteristic within human beings. Alladhi yufarikul insan wa bihi Sairal Bahain. And this is the characteristic which differentiates human beings. Yufariku. Yatamayyaz. Differentiates human beings from other animals. And human being as far as... <clears throat> human beings are animals. Um, they are living creatures. But what differentiates some human, uh, some animals like human beings from other animals is this power, this faculty. And this power or this faculty is called reason. That's one of the types of reason or one of the meanings or concepts of reason. So reason is reason or a lock. is this power faculty or a characteristic if you will which differentiates human beings from other animals so um, obviously um, human beings and animals have or might have uh, many other differences but this is the key difference in the senses as far as the understanding of the essence of a thing is concerned. So that's why in Aristotelian logic, for example, <clears throat> human beings are defined as humans are defined as rational animal so all insano hevano not so here we are, after a definition of human, in such a way that tells it not only what differentiates it from other animal, but what 
constitutes its essence. So we come here with genus. So that's the commonality between humans and animals. And then we come up with the differentia. What differentiates human being? from animals but we comes uh, but we come we come up with a specific difference the difference which is also not only differentiates human beings from animals but also uh, defines human beings as humans in their essence or in their core reality um, so and humans in that sense is a species of the genus animal so alinsan is a no that's a species and hevan is aljins and natik is uh, Al Fasl al Qarib or the specific difference. So, anyway, um, the purpose of this was to just uh, demonstrate what Imam Ghadali is saying here is that Al Aql or reason is the power. or a specific characteristic which differentiates human from animal now this is uh, still sort of <clears throat> the just the indication of what reason it is it's not really defining reason in itself it's just saying at this point that that's that's something which is unique to human beings and now and this something unique power or faculty we call reason that's one of its meaning now we need to know more about um, this faculty or this power uh, what it is and what it consists in and um, things like that and that would be its more detailed description so so falawalu al wasfu alladhi yufariqu al insanu bi sa'ir al bahaim so the first type of uh, reason can be defined as a characteristic or a quality or a power or faculty which differentiates human being from other animals and now he's describing going to describe that uh, power or that faculty or that uh, characteristic so that's the description of this faculty or this power which differentiates human being from animal So let's look at this in detail now when he said that um, this is a and by using the word power and faculty I'm taking a few liberties here um, 
with the translation but um, if reason is a power or a characteristic which differentiates human from animals one thing is clear by this and this is important and <clears throat> that thing is that uh, since it is a human faculty on its own on its own and these words are important there's no difference between a muslim or a non-muslim in the position in the position and the use of this faculty For the use of this faculty so on its own let's let's call it we still have to describe it but this faculty are subscript one or al-aql Ali for one is shared by all human because that's what makes them <clears throat> human in the sense that it differentiates them from other animals so uh, it is a shared human so there's no difference as far as Muslim or non-Muslim is concerned, they both are rational in this sense. That is, they possess, possess the faculty called reason, which differentiates them from animals. Because there might be other senses of a reason in which uh, which are not shared by Muslims and non-Muslims. Um, so, it, in those um, senses, a Muslim might be rational, called a non-Muslim irrational or vice versa. Those are more specific conceptions of reason which are rela related to a particular worldview. Uh, on the other hand, this one is, as far as it is possible, this more uh, the, uh, factual conception of reason. Uh, relatively divorced from particular worldviews. So that's an important thing here to start with. So in that sense, reason, the first type of reason is the human capacity. Capacity. In Urdu and Arabic and Farsi, we call it istedad. Arabic words which we use in Arab, uh, Urdu and Persian. Um, istedad, capability capacity as well as capability
we can also do call it potential because reason is a potential you have actually have to use it in order to actualize it Mawadali will come to that in a minute um, because when I'm not using my reason I'm sleeping for example or I'm just daydreaming I uh, might be not concentrating on something for example <laughs> not connecting two things for example it happens um, I'm still uh, I still have that capacity but only as potential because I'm at that moment I'm not actually using it that is not actualizing it so to go back to the text a bit oh, uh, so for love will all was for the for good and son be cyril behind me what will the his dad the liquor bull in the room in the body yeah what that be this in a till coffee yeah for okay so it's uh, potential is said that to receive theoretical knowledge we'll define this in a minute and to be able to be capable of what I would say practical reason to be able to do things in the physical world as well as social world using this capacity i'll come back to that so this is description of uh, reason as a capacity or power which differentiates human beings beings from uh, other animals so now we we'll need to look at istidad we need to look at al-ulum and nazariya we need to look at what is at-tadbir al-sina'at al-khafiyya al-fikriya and once we look at these three concepts we will be able to have a at least a basic fundamental description of this power or this faculty the we looked at uh, is that other potential part already so is that other is a capability capability or capacity uh can also say potential it's a power or a characteristics so you need to actually use it to activate it now this is a capacity for two types of things uh, um, two types of thing capacity or potential for two types of things capacity or potential for two types of things potential capacity this is the receptive capacity receptive in the sense that uh, there's an element of givenness
in this capacity an element of givenness although there's an activity involved in there too as we will see um, So it's a potential to receive theoretical knowledge. And we'll come in a minute for, we'll discuss in a minute what theoretical knowledge is. Uh, but there is a reception in that that theoretical knowledge is based on what is given either through senses for example or through the structure of mind or through some sort of intellectual intuition that depends on your philosophical and epistemological stance but that's the and this reason then works this reason works on that given to create further knowledge which is called theoretical knowledge so in that sense there is a receptiveness in that which he uh, this receptiveness he indicates with the use of his word al qubul so al wasf alladhi yufariqu al-insan bi sa'ir al-bahami wa huwa wa huwa al-istaadda bihi li qubul al-'ulum an-nazariyya wa tadbir as-sana'at al-khafiyya al-fikriyya so this qubul this receptiveness uh, is uh, from that perspective okay so and uh, let me rub off this oh let's just do away with the whole thing so so the reason is a power capacity or potential the end for theoretical knowledge and with Tadbir Sinat al Khafiya al Fikriya, I will say that's a practical reason what we call nowadays. And practical reason is of uh, many types, but uh, two basic types would be instrumental reasons so for example i want to build a house so that's the end bit so reason will some sort of reason will tell me whether i should build it or not but once i've decided my end then this practical capacity will tell me what instruments or how to actually construct this and how to actually actualize this uh, end so that's one of the function of the uh, practical reason and that's where the tadbir tadbir you would say management um and the sanaat can be you know skills production etc so there's a potential thought process which help us to achieve our ends uh, given that we have decided on ends and these ends can be 
mostly of physical nature, then we call it instrumental rationality, or if they are communicative uh, or social nature, we can call it uh, st uh, strategic rationality. We'll come to that in a minute uh, in detail. So just to go back so you don't lose the thread. So the reason that the potential can be a receptive knowledge, receptive uh, capacity to received, receive theoretical knowledge. and practical capacity to achieve ends and they can be physical, social, natural, cultural, political and social can be again strategic versus communicative etc. So we have social ends then with the use of reason we can build strategies to achieve those ends so these are, are both types so this reason is a power in the sense of practical rationality or practical power as well as receptive power that is theoretical knowledge as well as practical knowledge reason is power for that now let's um or should we stop here i think we should stop here because it's going to go for a few more sessions